Welcome to the Notre Dame NMR Operation and Concept Series. I am Evgeny Kavrigin, UNMR Director. In this episode, I will cover general concepts of NMR probe tuning and the practical workflow that I recommend. NMR probe is an antenna that sends radio frequency waves to spins in your sample. It is much like a broadcasting antennas of a cell phone tower communicating with our phones. The difference is that NMR probe coils are wrapped around your sample tube to direct maximum RF power inside your sample. As with any antenna, it must be tuned to the frequency of your recipient, a nuclear spin. Frequency of the nuclear spin is set by strength of the magnetic field of an MR magnet. If the probe coil resonates at wrong frequency, the probe cannot excite the spins or detect their signal. We tune the probe coils to shift their resonance frequency to the frequency of nuclear spins. Our antenna, a probe coil, must also be both selective and sensitive. Selective means to have the resonance curve as narrow as possible, and sensitive to have it as deep as possible. This is achieved by what is called a matching action. The top spin ATMA command is an automated algorithm that will do tuning and matching of the probe coil for us. The top spin WOB command will help us verify quality of the result. Before we begin tuning the probe, I need to display my experiment that I intend to run. ATMA needs to know what nuclear spins we plan to use to tune the NMR probe to the appropriate frequencies. ATMA will look up this information in the experiment that is currently displayed. For example, if I display a proton experiment, ATMA will look up in SEQ parse nucleus section and will only tune the proton channel because this is the sole channel defined in the experiment. If I plan to work with both proton and carbon, I will display a standard carbon experiment instead, because it contains the proton and carbon channel definitions. There are different ways to initiate and perform tuning. I will show you my favorite protocol. Tuning and matching involve a very complicated sequence of events. Top spin talks to the NMR console. The console talks to the probe. The probe turns on its step motors to physically change capacitance of the NMR coils. All this is happening inside the NMR probe. Once the coils are adjusted, the console measures a new resonance curve, we call it a wobble curve, and sends it back to topspin. Topspin decides on a new adjustment to the NMR coil parameters, and the entire cycle is repeated until the NMR probe is properly tuned and matched. This is a very long chain of communication. To make sure that we don't interfere or interrupt it accidentally, we will run ATMA and WOB with the help of a spooler. The spooler is a tool to create a queue of commands. When we issue any command in topspin, it is sent to NMR console directly. After it received the command, it is busy for some period of time and you can issue next command only after the previous one has finished. So you have to sit and patiently watch the screen. Instead, a spooler can take your command sequence all at once and submit your commands to the console one by one. It takes care to send every next command only after the previous command has correctly finished. You are able to see which commands are completed, which one is currently running, and which commands are still waiting in the queue. I cover the full range of capabilities of the top spin spooler in a separate tutorial found on our NMR training web pages. Here we will use the spooler only for one purpose. We want to see the progress of tuning and matching and be certain when it is finished. To display the spooler window, click on the spooler section of the status bar. I will resize this window to fit just below the lock display. Now I will issue the following commands. Q 
QRO OFF, QHMA and QWOB. The preceding QU indicates that you are sending this command to the spooler, not directly to the NMR console. The first command will ensure that your sample is not spinning. Tuning must be done with a static sample. The second one calls for automatic tuning and matching procedure. You see it appear in the spooler window and assume a status running. The third one is a command that will help us verify how well the tuning job was done. Now we will sit back waiting for ATMA to finish and WOB to start. We should see ATMA to disappear from the spooler list and WOB become running. The process is slow, may easily take up to 5 minutes. Please be patient. Remember, it is a complex communication between multiple pieces of equipment. At some point, the screen will show the resonance curve of the probe coil as it is being tuned and matched. The ATMA will start with the least sensitive nucleus, which is carbon in my case. By the ATMA design, the screen will disappear immediately as the ATMA finishes with the nucleus. Therefore, the result is often easy to miss, but no worries. Wob command, which is queued right after, will help us check the final results. The ATMA switches to Proton next, and after ATMA finishes, the Wob starts automatically. This screen will not disappear until we tell it to. First, we should see a sharp resonance aligning very closely with the center line. The nucleus you are looking at is listed on the top right. To check the other nucleus, Proton, click this button. Proton tuning looks very good. To quit Wob, click Stop button in its toolbar. Please wait patiently for the Wob to finish. Same long chain of communications is involved. In a few moments, the spooler window becomes empty. The NMR probe is now tuned to proton and carbon, and I can proceed with my experiments with these two nuclei. Important. Our dual channel probes have two coils, one for the proton and another one for all other nuclei. We say that this probe has a proton channel and a broadband channel. The consequence of this design is that the coil of the broadband channel may only be tuned to one heteronucleus at a time. For example, if I tuned just now to proton and carbon, I will be able to record proton and carbon experiment. However, if I now need to record the next experiment with fluorine or phosphorus or silicon, I must tune the probe again. For example, I recorded carbon experiments and now want to record fluorine. I need to retune the broadband channel of the probe. To do this, I will display the fluorine experiment and issue the same set of commands QURO OFF, QUATMA, QUWOB. I will be patient again. It may take up to 5 minutes for ATMA to complete its routine and for the WOB to display the final results. Fluorine is good. I will check the proton. Proton is perfect too. My probe is ready for proton fluorine experiments. Since the proton carbon combination is most often used in our facility, we are asking all users who use nuclei other than carbon to retune probe to carbon after you are done. This makes tuning for next users, often less experienced, much faster, and they will appreciate that you care. What if you do all as I told you? but tuning does not succeed. If you get any errors during ATMA operation like these, 
or warp shows you a poorly tuned probe in the end, you should try repeating the entire tuning procedure. First, check if the spooler is not suspended. You should see that suspend in the spooler menu is not checked. Then re-enter QROF, QATMA and QWOB. If the second try gives different errors, try one more time. ATMA is capable of recovering from some errors by itself. If you get the same errors, the problem is persistent. In this case, eject your sample, insert the standard tube with deuterochloroform and try to tune the probe again. Sometimes defective tubes or precipitating samples prevent tuning. If the standard tube tunes and yours doesn't, you have just proven that the instrument is working well and the culprit is your tube. Transfer your sample to a different tube and try again. You may also check your tube directly by adding pure solvent to your bad tube to see if that can be tuned. This will help you identify what causes the problem, the tube or the sample. If the standard tube did not tune, the spectrometer malfunctions. Please report it to us as soon as possible. In summary, to tune, first decide which nuclei you will need. Display experiment where these nuclei are shown in the nucleus section. Submit RO off, ATMA and WOB to spooler. Wait till ATMA quits and WOB displays a wobble curve. Inspect the wobble curve for both channels. Proceed to locking, shimming and NMR acquisition, discussed in next episodes. If you need to work with another heteronucleus next, you must tune broadband channel again. Please tune broadband channel back to carbon after you finished your work.